Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to create OAuth to client in Okta uh, and then use the client credentials grant to generate a JWT access token from Okta and then also configure a AWS API gateway which uses the built-in JWT authorizer. Uh, so this authorizer will then validate the Okta JWT access token and then allow or deny access. So this is a built-in JWT authorizer which is available in AWS and we can see how to configure it uh, for Okta. Uh, so before proceeding with the video, this is my blogging website. You can subscribe to this website to get updates on any new blogs that I post and also please subscribe to my channel. So having said that, uh, let's go ahead and start with the Okta configuration. So we have the Okta developer uh, website. So you can go to the developer.okta.com and you can sign in with your Google account or you can create a new account, however, like whatever you prefer. So I'm going to sign in with my Google account. So it's going to just ask for the location you can just provide some location and then click continue. So now I'm logged into the Okta website. So the first step that we need to do is create a OAuth to client application. So if you go to this applications tab, by default you will see certain applications in Okta. You can can just leave these applications as it is. Now let's go ahead and uh, create a OAuth to client, which is used for, so basically the mission to mission authentication is the client credentials grant. So in some places you will see this terminology where they call it as a mission to mission authentication, but as per RFC, it is called the client credentials grant. So let's go to next page and then it will ask for an API uh, application name. Here I will give it as AWS JWT or Z client. So once I click save, uh, like you will see that uh, it generated a client ID and a secret. You can leave this uh, client ID and secret as it is for now. Let's go ahead and configure the next thing, which is the API. So again, here, if you see, there is a default API uh, authorization server, which is already available for Okta. Let's add a new API. Let's call it as AWS API Gateway Test. And let's give the uh, audience as something like API JWT auth test description I think you can just leave it so now this API got created with uh, this particular audience and we will see like where this audience is actually used and where we need to configure this audience in AWS API gateway but before going there let's create a custom auth to scopes so if you look at Okta, there are some default OAuth 2 scopes and OpenID scopes which are already available, like the standard scopes like OpenID profile, email, phone address, all those things. You can add custom OAuth 2 scopes as well. In this case, since I'm going to use this scope for protecting, that is for authorizing access to your specific API that is deployed in AWS API Gateway, uh, we can just add a Let's say let's like let's name it as something like a, uh, I will say JW, JWT read JWT read and I can just give some description here JWT read JWT read and as of now let's set it as a default scope and then click create. So now this scope JWT read got created and we need to create an access policy in Okta to uh, basically allow that particular, the previous, the client that we created in the previous step to request this scope using client credentials grant. So let's uh, just uh, uh, create a policy, JWT auth. 
policy then create the, okay it's mandatory create the policy and then let's add a rule which says any client um, that tries to use this particular uh, api authorization server can use client credentials to actually generate the token so i will uncheck all the other grants and i will just use the client credentials grant jwt or rule and then create the rule so now we have everything in place so if you go to the settings in the authorization server there is a metadata url which is basically the well-known configuration url so if you open this url in a new tab you will see certain uh, like urls like token endpoint authorization endpoint all these things so now let's try to get a jwt access token uh, using this token endpoint so let's copy this token endpoint from here then i will open my postman and in order to get the jwt access token you need to actually use a post method and these details are available in the octa documentation you can refer the octa documentation as well but generally the token endpoint uh, supports only this uh, post method and then you need to give the authorization uh, uh, which is basically the basic auth so in the case of basic auth the uh, username and password will be the client that we created here so let's copy the client id and the secret and also we need to pass the grant type so grant type is actually client credentials and then when you click send so you got the jwt token here. so if you look at this token right let's open this token uh, like in uh, jwt.io so if you go and view this token you will see certain details like the issuer value which is basically same as this one like if you go to the security apis this one and then open this uh, well-known configuration so here you see a issuer so this issuer is like basically what it means is this particular token jwt token was issued by the and then you see an audience which says api So now we are done with the first step that is creating the Okta authorization server and then creating an Okta application which is basically a M2M -M client, machine to machine client or client credentials client whatever you want to call it. And now we tried hitting the Okta token endpoint and we got this uh, JWT token. So the next step is uh, we have to log into uh, AWS Management Console and then set up the API. So let's uh, set up the API here. So let me go to API Gateway. So if you go to the API Gateway, uh, like you will see certain options here like a API type which is like HTTP API, WebSocket API, REST API, all, all these things. So you can check the AWS documentation on what each of these category refers to. But in this case, we are going to use HTTP API because it is like in AWS API Gateway, only HTTP API supports the out of the box JWT authorizer. So let's click build and let's give the like let's name it as something like octa jwt auth api so let's click review and create then click create so the api now got created but there is nothing 
much like for example if i try to access this endpoint it just gives me a not found because nothing is configured in this api just the api configuration got created but still we need to do some additional configuration to make sure it exposes a new endpoint so in order to add a new endpoint we go to this routes click create let's uh, name it as users and then let's click create so now a route a new route got created now we need to add certain things uh, so that this particular api returns some response so right now if i try to access this api right let's see like i get a not found now if i enter users again i will get not found because there is nothing configured for that route like i added a no, new route but i still need to do some additional steps so that it will return some response so in order to get a mock api response there are, there are lots of websites uh, which are available in the web like you can go to mock api response like uh, for example uh, there is a json test data rest api so if you go to this json placeholder right so there is a like this website this particular website has certain uh, urls for example if i click this users i get a list of users it's just a mock api so anyone can use it for that testing purpose so i'm going to, what i'm going to do is uh, map this particular route to that json placeholder api so how to do that uh, is basically like you click this attach integration then click create an attach integration then you select http uri and then you select get and then add this url now you click the create button now we have this api configured now if i refresh this page you see that same response which is which we saw here so basically what happens is this api gateway when i hit this slash users endpoint in the api gateway it actually proxy the request to this json placeholder website which returns some test user data so it so it just uh, cop, uh, forwards that response back to the browser so that's why when we are hitting that aws api gateway url we are getting this response so i can actually try to hit this url from even uh, postman i should get the same response so if you see here i got the response so now let's add an authorization layer to this particular endpoint so let's go to this authorization configuration and click create and attach a con an authorizer so here if you see there is a jwt authorizer um, and this is available out of the box and it's a really great feature because we like if you have to write a build a logic to do all these validations it's like we have to write some code and make sure it works fine do all, all sorts of testing everything but it's good that aws provides this jwt authorizer out of the box so let's name it as uh, something uh, jwt auth you can leave this identity source as it is so the issuer url will be the one which you saw it saw in this well-known configuration it's available in this json token as well so if i look at this json token i can copy it from here uh, and put it here and then the audience is something uh, like audience is same as what we configured here for this api right so this is the audience from the jwt token so if you look at this jwt token this audience is exactly same as what you saw in that octa console so i will add that audience so now i created an attached now let's try accessing that same endpoint from postman and see what happens so if i try to access now i get an unauthorized error that is because um, now this particular endpoint is protected by a jwt authorizer which expects a JWT token with the issuer value of this particular value and the audience of audience with this particular value. So if you look at the first tab in the postman, like I have the token endpoint where I can generate a new token. Let me copy this token 
and pass it in the authorization header so let's see what happens when i pass it so now when i pass this in the authorization header now i got the response right so so now basically what aws is doing is what aws api gateway is doing is it's va validating this jwt token that i sent in the header and if you look at this jwt token again this jwt token um, the issuer value is this particular value this is whatever we you see here the dev i sent something and the audience is api jwt of dev so if you look at my aws api gateway configuration yeah it exactly matches this issue. so that's why it allows access to this particular endpoint which is hosted in aws api gateway now let me change this uh, audience like let's say i change this audience to some other value like i just append a value number one now this will fail like if i try to access this i got an unauthorized error that's because the audience that is present in this jwt token is not matching with the audience that is configured here now let me again change it back to the correct value save it and when i click send i again get a response so now the first step is complete let's now add an additional authorization check that is only a jwt token with a specific scope which is basically this jwt read scope can access this api so i added this and when i try to access this api i will still get a valid response a successful response because this jwt token if you if you look at this jwt token it has a scope of jwt read so since the scope is like jwt read it allows access to this particular api endpoint now let's let's change it to some other value just for testing purpose like if i change it to say jwt write and if i try to hit i get a forbidden error but not an unauthorized error the reason we get a forbidden error is because the token is valid the token that i passed in the request is valid but then the token doesn't have the correct scope like i have configured jwt right here but the token only has a jwt read scope so even though the token is valid it doesn't have the correct scope to access this particular api that's why aws returns a forbidden error instead of an unauthorized error now let me again fix this uh, scope and again click send so now i get the response so uh, this is how like uh, we need to use the uh, aws the uh, the jw what do you say the jwt authorizer which is available out of the box and it is a very good utility like uh, which is available out of the box you can basically replace this uh, authorizer with any uh, any other identity provider i am using okta here you can replace it with say uh, azure ad jwt token or a auth0 jwt token or ping federate or for your any jwt token so you can replace it with basically any jwt token the only thing you have to make sure is you configure the correct issuer url the correct audience to make sure that jwt token is can be easily validated by this aws api gateway so that concludes this video if you have any questions or comments you can comment uh, in this video and thank you for watching and again uh, please subscribe to my channel thank you